from the UCB Theater. It's seven second delay. Everybody clap. Um, I am a radio professional, so you're in good hands radio-wise. Um, Andy Breckman is our comedy professional. Yeah. With our guest, the 13th funniest man in New York, according to a list that neither Ken nor Andy are on. In paragraph, they, they liken you to a Jack Nicholson in his prime, or a cross between Jack Nicholson in his prime and a smug jazz DJ after a few bong hits. Well, that does describe me perfectly, don't you think? Everybody clap. A poet who is so talented, you will not hate poetry for a few minutes. Everybody clap. Can people make a living writing poetry? Is it possible to pay the rent? No. <laughs> Two musicians who are so talented, everyone will have an orgasm. Everybody clap. A feeling things would never be okay, but they were. Although we felt like it had all been done before, I had to try. Uh, we're going to begin with a bingo game. Everyone has a bingo card here at uh, the UCB Theater. And the, it's a big prize. Everyone's very excited. My first thought was the prize would be a ride home in a limousine. Oh, that's what I thought it was. No, but then I realized uh, that would cost money. They're probably going to want money. Uh, uh -huh. so, uh, so instead I offered... <laughs> However, that I, uh, I would drive them home. But uh, it's not just going to be any bingo game. We're not just going to call numbers. Oh, we no, because that would uh, be death on the radio. Calling bingo be. numbers, nothing, yes. nothing could possibly be worse well, we than we have that. a, uh, we, we came up with a great idea. There's a, there's a great rapper. He lives in New York. He's a friend no, of the show. No, he's from Jersey City. He's from our own Jersey City. Oh, he is? He's yeah. a friend of, friend of uh, Pat's, and we got in touch with him, and we're lucky to have him, and uh, we should bring him out right now. Yeah, please welcome June Star, Mr. Blackman. Okay, and the right. first number. Here we go. First number is N41. N41. Let's have fun. Yeah, here we, here we go. Be right. And what's the, what was that last number? B the, the B4 was the last number. Okay, sir. And this is N39. Staying on my mind. Staying on time. W. F M U. And who? J U N E. That's me. He told me to rhyme, so let me see. We got a B. And it happens to be a B3. Oh, where should I begin? <laughs> N38. N38 was the last one. And the next one is O, O63. 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 He had to get the last one. Yep, O63. O63. <laughs> this could go on. And the next long. one is a G. <laughs> the next one is a G just like me. G52. G Oh, wait. Slow down, she's going fast, right? Yeah. All right. She's kind of good with the... Oh, I'll say. B6? <laughs> yeah, B6. Wait, wait, what? I can oh. confirm. B6. Confirm. We have a confirmation. B6. Yeah. N36. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh thank yeah. God! Yay! Y'all don't wear that. Praise the Lord. N36. And who won? Who won? Oh, no, it's a young girl. I can't go in the car right. with her. I just... Yes, Andy, our next guest is uh, one of the funniest people in the world. He's been in thousands of movies and television shows. Please welcome Todd Barry. Now, are you living your dream? Is this, the, is this growing up in high school and college, is this, is this the life you hope to lead? Uh, I never like... thought about doing it in, until after college. If we're getting serious, and yeah, okay. and so everyone, I guess, remembers their first time on stage. That was after college. It was, I know. That's later than a lot of people. I know. Well, I was twenty-three. And were you goaded onto the stage by friends? What were you doing during the day in Florida? Uh tanning. No, I was. Uh, <laughs> I was substitute teaching in miscellaneous uh, bad jobs. And you open up uh, New York, uh, Time Out New York. Why don't you set the stage for us? It's a day like any other. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's pretend I opened up Time Out the okay. <laughs> instead of getting a Google alert behind me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I was sitting in my loft. <laughs> my housekeeper said, you might want to see this, Mr. Barry. <laughs> and she handed me my decaf. I don't drink decaf. It was, it was a list. They, they had compiled a list of the 50 funniest people New, in New Yorkers. York. People yeah. in New York. And usually you take, I, you know, you can quibble with a list like this, but this, this one they got exactly 
Right. You can exactly. quibble unless I'm on it. Then yeah. You know, this is, I don't. Congratulations on number on be, thirteen. On being number thirteen. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, Joan Rivers had a, apparently a really hot year, and that cause she was number twelve. I couldn't imagine the meeting, though, for this thing. I just, I'd fighting love over. to think about it. Who's 20? No, he should be 28. No, he should be 29. Uh, Do you yeah. still keep your uh, list of underappreciated tweets? Um, well, I did that two years in a row where I, uh, last, I think the year before last, I actually found a way to, because some of it, it's a lot of work. I, I gave people a link to a PDF of the 153 most underappreciated tweets, I think it was of 2010. From Co anybody. Coincidentally, all mine. <laughs> I've noticed, well, I've noticed um, I mean, you're very successful on Twitter. Oh you have 150,000 yeah. followers. 159, but hey. Okay. And I've noticed that you... See, uh, we handled that correction immediately. That was yeah. Good. <laughs> did you already tape the special? I did. How, how I, uh, I, can't, I can't wait. That's, uh, is this your I can't wait? This, that's is this I you not it. being able to wait? <laughs> this is me being excited. Because no, I, I feel like you could wait based on what... <laughs> no, I feel like the wait is not going to be a problem. <laughs> I can't wait. I think it's going to be a pretty easy time for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, Andy, our next guest is uh, WFMU's resident poet, if we have one, and uh, an editor, a visual artist, performance artist. Please welcome Todd Colby. He's... Uh, He's told me a little bit. He's tried to fill me in. Tell, why don't you tell listeners again about this poem and how it became a mainstay at the station? Um, I did. Uh, it, I wrote the poem. My mom had told me when I was uh, home from college years ago that she really, really loved uh, cake, and she would make us cakes, and she would always make two cakes. The big secret was she would eat the cake, and then when we would get home, she'd have a cake for us, and she would never partake of the cake, so she ate a lot of cake. Um, <laughs> And so in my notebook, I just wrote down this series of lines that became the cake poem. Um, and it was in a book of mine called Rip Snort that came out a long time ago. And then I went up to Toronto and did uh, uh, much music, uh, did a video around the poem, which they played a lot. Um, and then a CD came out of it subsequently. And then Kenny G, who's a Kenneth Goldsmith, is also an avant-garde poet and a friend of mine. Oh, he hates our guts. <laughs> yeah. so and, and Does so that the, explain it, Andy? It does. So the poem is how old then? I'm sorry. The, the poem oh, is. Oh God! It was probably written in 1989. And now, do you go around? Do you go around and and tour and do performances of your poetry? I do. I've done. Yeah. I, I was. I was just in London actually last uh, November. That rings um, a bell. To, to, uh, now you want me to read cake right off the bat, or do you I, like me to, to read? You. Uh, you're the, you're driving I would the love bus. to hear cake. Cake. <clears throat> I'm so full of cake. If I ate any more cake, I'd have to vomit first. I could eat a cake a day, sometimes two or three cakes in a single day. I love cake. I can't be any clearer than it. I love cake. I could eat every cake in New York City. I can't even go into bakeries anymore because I'll eat all the cake. I'll say, where's the cake? I love cake. Get me the cake. And they'll say, we know how very much you love cake, and we know that you very rarely have the money to buy our cake, so you can't come in here because you can't afford the cake. But you love cake, so get out of here. You can't come in here because you don't have any money for our cake. You don't have the money. You can't buy our cake. I'll punch somebody in the ass for some cake. Give me all your cake. I want cake. I want your cake. Give me all your cake. I love cake. <laughs> My thoughts on bears. When bears are depicted as playing cards or smoking cigars, it contributes to people feeling like they could be friends with bears or that hanging out with a bear in nature might be a funny or entertaining way to pass the time and make a new friend. Most bears I know are stupid and selfish, and yet bears are rarely held accountable for their actions simply because they're bears. That's crap. When stupid and selfish bears slap people on the back and surprise them with outward signs of affection, People often get the wrong idea and get too friendly with bears and like want to hang out with bears and play sports with bears and G-chat with bears and other stuff like that. And that's just not fair to all the people that need real friends. <laughs> I like pictures of bears better where the bears are doing things that they would normally do in the wild. <laughs> Todd, I had a, actually before you read a, yeah, another yeah. poem, your book here, Riot in the Charm Factory, yeah. 
Uh, the cover photo is um, sneakers and shoes hanging from power lines. Mm -hmm. It's a friend of mine named Jem Cohen who did the Fugazi documentary, actually, Instrument. Uh -huh. um, he's a photographer, a friend, and he did the covers of a lot of the Drunken Boat records as well as this book. Do you have a theory as to why... Uh, the phenomenon of sneakers hanging from power lines happens all over the world. There's a lot of urban myths about that. Right, about drug dealers. It, it, yeah. One of them is that it denotes a drug factory. Yeah. Or a lot of poets on that block or their shoes. They do. That. Really? That's how you find yeah. the poets? Yeah. You follow the sneakers on the power lines. Yeah. Learn something new every day. I am a yeah. fountain of knowledge. Andy, they, uh, they are playing Shea Stadium. Tomorrow night, they have a brand new record, Whistle Tips, on the Ernest Jenning record label. Wow. Please welcome Dinosaur Feathers. <laughs> Beep! 